Coming up on Ag Week TV, the Supreme Court moves on two cases important to agriculture. USDA releases a handful of reports, including the final WASDE production numbers. We'll visit NDSU Extension and discuss an important program for farmers and ranchers. And the Ag Secretary announces China trade actions and new conservation programs. Welcome to Agui TV. I'm Michelle Rook. It's great to have you joining us as we begin our eighth season. This week, we're coming to you from the 53rd Annual Port Congress in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The 2022 Annual Meeting and Trade Show featured 209 commercial booth displays representing 161 exhibitors. The robust growth in the pork industry in the region was evident with the high level of participation in the trade show and seminars. I think that people are just realizing that there's a lot of opportunity for them and that it's uh, um, the systems are something that are manageable for them to do on their operations. Operations. A lot of growth is younger producers that are finding a way to get into this capital intense industry through pork production. Pork producers are facing a few challenges to start the new year, including the fight against Proposition 12, which went into effect in California on January 1st. The measure requires all pork sold in the state to come from sows that are not housed in gestation crates. California is a large market for pork, so it will be costly to producers in our region, especially if they change their production system. The National Pork Producers Council brought a lawsuit against Prop 12 as it violates the Interstate Commerce Clause. The Supreme Court will decide on January 18th if they will hear the case. If they choose to hear it, there will be briefs that will need to be filed, oral arguments presented possibly, uh, and then we'll have a ruling sometime mid-summer. The other challenge is the slowdown in slaughter at processing plants tied to COVID. Some labor issues are starting to pop up here and there, both on the inspection side of it and on the processing end of it. And so hopefully we can get through this without uh, any harvest shutdown. However, the labor issues are expected to be a temporary hiccup rather than a full meltdown like in 2020. USDA released a slew of data this week, including the WASD quarterly stocks and small grain seedings. U.S. soybean production and ending stocks were raised 10 million bushels in the report, but USDA cut Brazil and Argentina production by a combined 8 million metric tons. USDA raised U.S. corn ending stocks by 47 million bushels from December, plus Brazil corn production was lowered by 3 million metric tons. And winter wheat seedings were up 2% from last year at 34.4 million acres. U.S. carryout was also raised by 30 million bushels. Joining us with report analysis is Pat Von Church. Pat, soybean production and ending stocks not adjusted much on a U.S. basis. So really this report dug into South American numbers and a pretty good drop there in uh, soybean production. Yeah, exactly. The uh, USDA was, was more aggressive than we thought they were going to be in terms of dropping the size of that uh, uh, South America crop, particularly the Argentine soybean crop. And so they got a little closer in line with some of the private uh, analyst estimates that were coming out pre-report. And, and so that's interesting. And I do think as we move past uh, getting these final crop numbers in, um, the marketplace is likely to focus even more on South America weather as we go forward here. So if the rain event that the market's been expecting is kind of a bust, could we go back up and retest the highs in soybeans? As we go through this long three-day weekend with no markets on Monday, it'll be interesting to see the market reaction to the rain events that, are, that, are, that have been forecasted. And you're right, if we don't end up getting the rains that are forecasted in the show, it's likely that uh, we will go back and test those highs. So corn ending stocks were raised back above 1.5 billion bushels, so that puts us at a much more comfortable level from a stocks to use ratio then, doesn't it? Yeah, we elevated that stocks to use ratio up to 10.4% to be exact. And that's, a, um, that's a, a, a more comfortable number than what the trade was anticipating. That's a more comfortable number than what I was anticipating. I was expecting to see uh, that increase in ethanol disappearance. We expected that based upon the weekly uh, uh, disappearance. But uh, uh, the USDA uh, did, did raise the production numbers and, and so largely offset, actually more than offset, um, the increase in demand. If this market was just about a U.S. market, it'd probably be bearish, but we still have some issues globally. And we did see a drop in South American production as well on corn, but certainly not as aggressive in Argentina as 
CONAB had. Yeah, it seems as though the USDA was pausing a little bit on, on making any uh, aggressive adjustments on the corn side of the equation. So we'll see how that plays out, but they likely have to reduce the size of that Argentine corn crop at some point. The wheat ending stocks were raised uh, about 30 million bushels, and so we are pretty comfortable there again, aren't we? Yeah, we grow uh, grow wheat on every continent on the planet, and, and uh, uh, we've had a tight global stocks to use ratio that uh, everyone's motivated to try to fix. And so the global balance sheet on wheat's going to probably continue to loosen up here as we go. And we've encouraged a higher production globally now for a while with some higher prices. And so I think the wheat complex is probably, you know, from a tight balance sheet perspective, is probably the least concerning of the th major three. And we have encouraged some production here in the U.S., obviously with the winter wheat seedings coming in bigger than last year. Yeah, a really good fall for that. And I tell you, the math on uh, on planting winter wheat and following up with the second crop of soybeans and some of the, the fringe areas of the Corn Belt made a lot of sense, especially when you consider considering fertilizer prices. Pat Von Tersch joining us with Professional Ag Marketing. Coming up on Ag Wheat TV, how NDSU is working to make farming a safer profession. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation with a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. Improve the profitability of your ranch by partnering with Top Herefords. Attend the bull sale February 11th, 2022 at The Ranch near Gray City, North Dakota. When you buy a Top Herefords bull, you're getting top-of-the-line genetics and benefits of marketing your feeder cattle and replacement quality heifers direct. It's a common-sense approach to greater profits on your ranch. View the 2022 catalog at topherefords.com and join us at the bull sale February 11th, 2022 at 1 p.m. Hamilton System, Inc. in Drayton, North Dakota is the North American distributor of the Fantini Corn and Sunflower Header. Both the L03 Corn Head and the G03 Sunflower Head have a simple, high-efficiency, low-maintenance PTO-driven gearbox, which eliminates slippage and power loss even in the most trying conditions. These heads are built with a solid one-piece frame and tubular steel construction that will withstand the harshest field conditions. Available in models from 4 to 18 rows, they adapt to any combine and come with a four-year warranty on the transmission units. Risk management is not just for the grains. Livestock producers, did you know you can help protect the price of your production? Livestock Risk Protection, or LRP, is a great tool to help you protect the price of your years of hard work. LRP is available for feeder cattle, fat cattle, and swine. Besides the availability of price risk insurance in your production, cattle producers can also protect their pasture and hayland from the lack of rainfall with Pasture Rangeland Forage, or PRF Insurance. To learn more about these programs, call Martinson Egg Risk Management. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. Farming is one of the most dangerous professions. In addition, most farm accidents happen far from a hospital, but many of these accidents can be prevented. Emily Bill joins us now with this week's cover story on what NDSU is doing to keep farmers safer. Michelle, NDSU Extension hasn't had a farm and ranch safety coordinator since 2005, but the need is great. So the legislature funded a full-time safety position. When you're stressed, when you're in a hurry, that's when we tend to make mistakes. Stress and time crunches are common on the farm, but they don't have to lead to tragic mistakes. <coughs> NDSU Extension is being proactive about farm safety by hiring Angie Johnson as the new farm and ranch safety coordinator. Anytime we can strive to prevent farm-related injuries from happening, not only are we looking at saving and improving and lives, we'll but we're really focused on rural health care because the reality is, is getting to a level one trauma center in North Dakota 
is, is tough. The health and the safety of our farmers and ranchers is critical to us. Extension Associate Director Lynette Flage says they're happy to be involved in accident prevention. The stresses out there that farmers and ranchers face are incredible, and we wanted to make sure, again, we could provide that education, that upfront prevention. Three feet into the grain, the downward force is 325 pounds. Johnson grew up on a farm and continues to raise cattle, so she understands the dangers, even with the tasks that have been done hundreds or even thousands of times. Johnson says it's important to understand the safety risks and take the time to implement the safety measures that can help mitigate risk. The performance of my equipment, they could save a life. And same with a slow moving vehicle sign, the bright orange triangles on the back of equipment. You can buy a sign for $16. For $16, you could save a life. Angie Johnson will work with county extension agents around the state to coordinate and implement safety programs. Thanks, Emily. Remember, you can always get more in-depth on our cover story in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Environmental groups led by the Center for Food Safety want new life given to their lawsuit over dicamba registrations. They're asking a federal court to lift a stay and speed up their lawsuit, which demands the Environmental Protection Agency vacate the 2020 dicamba registrations of Ingenia, Tavium, and Extendamax. The groups filed a motion in U.S. District Court using a recently released report from EPA that they say details continued widespread alleged dicamba damage in 2021. The U.S. Supreme Court announced it will not take up an appeal of the D.C. Circuit Court decision that struck down EPA's year-round E15 rule. Ethanol officials say the high court decision is disappointing. They think the court got it wrong because EPA was well within their authority to allow year-round E15 sales. The D.C. Circuit took a very narrow approach to what the EPA could do, which really runs counter to several other decisions. So we thought it was right for the Supreme Court to overturn. Shaw says the only way to make changes in time for the summer driving season is for the states to act to ensure E15 can be sold year round. Late in 2021, eight Midwestern governors wrote EPA asking for waivers to allow summer sales of E15. There is authority under the Clean Air Act. And it allows governors to level the regulations between E10 and E15 for their states. Longer term, Shaw says they'll continue to press EPA because the Clean Air Act also provides the agency authority to expand E15. Plus, there's been no legislative fix in Congress. Ahead on Ag Week TV, U.S. Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack talks China trade and climate change. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. Growing up as a kid, Gateway was always the grain bin building and the grain handling people that were out in our area. One of the reasons we chose to go with Gateway was they're the leader in the industry and they are the number one Brock dealer in the United States. We've really liked the Brock design and some of the designs that Gateway has come up with throughout the years. My best advice would be to just push your trust in them and let them uh, come up with the design that's gonna fit your needs. 
We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. And what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvests. The roller coaster temperature trend has continued through January, but much of the region has been fairly dry. Will that continue? Here's our agri weather outlook. To the weather portion of Ag Week now, the general outlook for the next two weeks showing a return of the colder temperatures. It was nice to see some of those mild temps return with a bit of a January thaw last week. We will be tracking also a few small shots of some snow, especially across the upper Midwest. Much more active weather down in the Gulf and into the East Coast. We'll be tracking a big area of low pressure to bring some nasty winter weather down there. So as far as snowfall though, this season, I wanted to recap where we've seen the lion's share across North Dakota stretching through North northern Minnesota. Vargamorehead has already seen over 30 inches of snow, almost 40 inches in Grand Forks. Similar story in Duluth. Twin Cities, about two feet of snow. Low on snow, though, across South Dakota, just about two inches in Pierre and 10 inches in Sioux Falls. Des Moines, low on snow as well. Similar story in the Chicagoland area. And of course, the farther south you go, the less snow you've seen. But Memphis has already seen about an inch of snow. Amarillo, about a half an inch of snow. Low on snow in the Denver area and Billings, pretty close to average as far as snow is concerned. Here's a look at the jet stream forecast as we go throughout Saturday. That big dip in the cold air has returned, especially even down through Iowa into portions of Nebraska and even into Kansas. That jet stream will start to ripple off to the east. And with it, that's going to take an area of low pressure Sunday night and into Monday. That's where that low pressure is going to bring some rain down to the south, into the Gulf, and eventually bring some ice into the Appalachians and eventually bring some snow up to the northeast. And they're going to be dealing with some pretty messy travel conditions around there. The frigid air is going to start to rebuild as we go into the middle of the week. So the jet stream ripples down a little bit across the Dakotas and into Minnesota and into Wisconsin. That's going to be some of the colder air Wednesday and into Thursday. Some warmth will start to build down in the south, but eventually we'll see a return of those colder temperatures. The jet stream will kind of level off right about here as we head into next week, and that will bring a chance for a few little shots of some very light snow showers with it. As far as temperatures this week, again, with the jet stream taking that big dip down to the south, expecting well below temperatures across Minnesota and into Wisconsin, slightly above temperatures on the other side of that jet stream. Temperatures more like the 40s and 50s down to the south. And that's also where the dry weather is going to continue across California and stretching into the high plains. Down to the south, though, again, Monday and into Tuesday, that area of low pressure is stretching down to the south. Sunday night through Monday is going to bring some rain and some storms down to the south, some ice across the Appalachians, and eventually some snow up into upstate New York. And it's going to be a pretty nasty storm system for the early portion of the week. As far as next week goes, big jet, dip in that jet stream will continue to bring below average temperatures across the entire eastern half of the nation, slightly more above temperatures off to the west. And as far as precipitation goes for next week, still looking like that jet stream could bring a few little spots of some very light snow across the northern plains. Cooler temperatures look to be the story as we close out the month of January. Improve the profitability of your ranch by partnering with Top Herefords. Attend the bull sale February 11th, 2022 at The Ranch near Gray City, North Dakota. When you buy a Top Herefords bull, you're getting top of the line genetics and benefits of marketing your feeder cattle and replacement quality heifers direct. It's a common sense approach to greater profits on your ranch. View the 2022 catalog at topherefords.com and join us at the bull sale February 11th, 2022 at 1 p.m. At Advanced Grain Handling Systems, we're your full-service grain dryer and bin project partner. We'll handle everything from start to finish. These guys are all in one. That was one of the big draws. They were the general. They took care of the electrical. They took care of the cement, took care of everything. Whether your next project is big or small, let our team help with it all. Visit advancedgrainhandling.com. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. 
Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer. Check out all our new and used equipment online at northstaregg.com or call 701-361-4790. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts the dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Ag Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Soybeans are becoming a more popular crop in western North Dakota, but there are some challenges growers need to be aware of. Rose Dunn joins us now with more on the Western North Dakota Soybean Schools. At the session, soybean growers can learn the latest production techniques for improving yields from NDSU Extension specialists. Soybeans are a relatively new crop in Western North Dakota, but new varieties have been developed for the drier conditions there. A wide range of experts from across the state will talk about soybean management for that environment. At these events, we're going to have market updates, fertility updates, research-based information from different research centers across the state, and it's really Western North Dakota focused. You know, the, the management is going to be quite a bit different from the Red River Valley. Out here in the West, we have a lot lower yield potential, and with that comes different management. The seminars will be held at the KMOT Ag Show in Minot, North Dakota on January 26th and in Dickinson on February 7th. Topics include nitrogen fixation, soil, weed, and insect management, and storage. All the information is on your screen. The event debuted last year, but it was held virtually due to the pandemic. Thanks, Rose. Trade and climate smart agriculture are keys to keeping farmers profitable for the future. Ag Week TV's Jeff Beach joins us now with how USDA is leading efforts in these areas. Michelle, Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack announced China trade enforcement and new climate smart ag programs at the American Farm Bureau Convention in Atlanta this week. Vilsack says despite the recent expiration of ag purchase commitments under the Phase 1 agreement, the U.S. continues to push China to meet their remaining obligations. Our Chinese friends are about $16 billion light over what they committed to purchase. And that's why Ambassador Tai, our U.S. Trade Representative, is going to China and continues to converse with China about the necessity of living up totally and completely to the Phase 1 trade agreement. Vilsack also announced USDA is investing $50 million in 118 partnerships to expand conservation opportunities for climate-smart ag to provide a new revenue stream for farmers. And through pilots and demonstration projects, we can encourage farmers to come together, uh, establish climate smart practices, establish those climate smart commodities, and do it in a way that makes sense on the ground. USDA is also offering $38 million in 11 states to mitigate climate change with cover crops. They're partnering with other farm and conservation groups with a goal of doubling acreage by 2030. Buying or selling a farm can be challenging, but there are some groups that can help. The stories ahead on Ag Week TV. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation with a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. Systems way good work, good pay, and a good life lets me live my way. Good work, good pay, and a good life. Trans systems way good work, good pay, and a good life it lets me live my way. It's trans systems way good work.
every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. The 40th annual Egg Week Farm Show will return to the Graham Arena Complex at the Olmsted County Fairgrounds on March 8th through 9th, 2022. This year, Egg Week plans to host panel discussions on four hot topic issues in agriculture, egg in a carbon neutral world, cybersecurity in agriculture, animal egg policies, and urban agriculture. It's going to be a can't miss opportunity for farmers and egg leaders in the region. Farm retirement and transitions can be challenging, but we met a southeastern Minnesota farmer who's making it easier for a young family to own their own farm. I realized probably in 2018 that I just wasn't going to be able to sustain it much longer. Lynn Reek has owned the 25-acre Singing Hills Dairy in Nurse Strand, Minnesota for 25 years. She raised goats and made cheese, but it was becoming too much for her to maintain. Several attempts to sell the farm fell through, but it was important to Reek that it continue as a farm rather than be sold to developers. It's a beautiful small farm. I mean, it's perfect for pasture animals. There's some land that's nice and flat out there that was cropped before. But land is expensive, making it hard for young farmers to get started. That's when Reek got help from a group called Renewing the Countryside. The group aims to help farmers stay on the land. Along with help from money raised by the American Farmland Trust, Reek's land is being transitioned to the Lohr family, who have been renting land for years. On our farming, there's always barriers. And sometimes, you know, there, there are more, especially as we know, for beginning farmers, emerging farmers, and farmers of color, often for female farmers. Thanks to a model like this, a new owner has a chance to pursue their dream of owning a farm. Well, I think and hope this place is gonna be a blessing. In the last five years, Minnesota has lost 3,400 farms, much of that land being sold for urban development. Stories you'll only see on AgWeek.com and AgWeek magazine this week. Telc USA, a multi-million dollar small town North Dakota ag product company has been acquired by Brandt Inc., an Illinois ag retailer. And we profile a family who decided to move their calving start date from early spring to early winter and the effects that that's had. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have yourself a great and safe week.